Mining field is sort of the nature side. I'm a fisherman. I fished that area for a long time. I've camped on the island for over 15, 16 years. Uh, I'll tell you now, birds fly across that island uh, at all hours of the day. Uh, one day I walked out into the middle and there was 400 Pacific gulls sitting in a paddock out there in the middle of the storm. I caught in a 30 knot southwester and they were right in the middle of the island sitting there together, not doing anything. So. Uh, the impact on the channel, uh, I've had the good fortune to have spent the last five years living on the Montague Channel. My kids have spent nearly most of that time playing in the rock pools. The life that is present in that system is amazing. We've got pygmy squid, we've got sand eels, we've got I don't know how many types of shrimp. Just the other day I was sitting there and there was a hundred juvenile rock flathead, oh, not rock flathead, blue spot flathead swimming around my feet. Uh, it was explained to me the nutrients to feed that and support that whole system come in on the spring tides from the west. That's where it gets most of its food from, and that is what supports that whole system. You put a causeway across at the narrowest point where the east tide and the west tide come in and meet and draw back, mm. we'll end up losing our access as fishermen to that area. That is the premier fishing spot in this state right now. We've got the largest King George Whiting in the country there. The snapper are going gangbusters, and when you can get out there, the kingfish are doing their thing too. The only access for our recreational sector is through the western end of that channel in an easterly when it's light. Uh, if you go out the uh, eastern side, you'll be leaving in a 10 knot easterly sometimes, but by the time you get to the petrels, you're dealing with 20 knots. It's not safe and it's not, not workable. So we will lose our access if that causeway goes through, bridge, whatever they are going to put there, changes all the time. Uh, everything about this project is wrong. Aboriginal impacts. That's where the tribes of the Northwest converged every October on the full moon. That's where they conducted their intermarriage ceremonies, man, woman and child, unlike the mainland. That area is probably, well it is, it's the most significant site on this coast to the Aboriginal tribes of which there's not one living descendant left. So it's up to us to make sure that it's not desecrated. In Michael Mansell's words, they've done sticks and stones archaeology out there, and that's it. They burned the place last March when COVID broke out. The fire that went through that island was incredible. There was footage of that. It is disgraceful, the treatment, and it is even disgraceful that we're sitting there, here now being affected by this thing that's thrown on us by people that sit in high places and never set foot in that area. You've heard it from Eric, you've heard it from Mick, and you've heard it from Ben. Uh, this is just a no-brainer. And there is an alternative. This is the other beauty. There's a project that's on the draw cards on the West Coast. West Coast Renewables. 3,000 construction jobs. You know, that's for us Tasmanians. Where's the Labor Party on that? The Liberal Party? It's mainly for hydrogen production. They've gone ahead and given funding to Fortescue and Origin, two major donors to the Liberal Party for hydrogen production in Bell Bay. There's your pork barrel that uh, Simon Bevelacqua talked about a few weeks ago in, in the paper. You know, uh, we've got an election coming up. What did the North West get out of the funding? We got absolutely zilch. In March they were talking about hydrogen production and using the Port of Burnie. Well, where, where are we now? Roger Gents has been stalling and storming this project from day one because they know this one here is a lemon. West, the West Coast Renewable Wilderness ticks all the boxes. No bird impacts. Australian managed superannuation funds using existing easements and infrastructure for the power. Uh, what else have we got? Hydrogen production. They've offered cheap power to get the salmon farms, one of the contentious, another contentious area we're going to be dealing with here shortly, to get them on land and finally out of our waterways and treating this place and this state with respect. You look at what's available there, and all along this coast, our fish traps predate the pyramids, all the caves to the Aboriginal side of thing. You can converge there every October, you can build a whole industry just informing not only us, because it's been suppressed all that information, but the greater part of Australia in that. The fishing side of things, 60 trailers at the Great Ram of Montague the other day, we don't rely on tourists from elsewhere, we're relying on people from this state using these places that we love. And it's up to us to make sure that they're protected from idiot projects such as this which benefit nobody.